Chances are, if you tell people that you want to complete a 100 mile bike ride, they'll think you're crazy. But if you know exactly how to prepare, what to pack, and how to tackle the ride, it stops sounding crazy and starts sounding doable. The fact is that you don't need all that much stuff to complete a 100 mile ride. Most of the 80 plus mile rides that I've done have been with just a backpack. A single backpack is all you really need, so here's how to crush 100 mile rides on a single backpack. I'll show you why I prefer to ride long distances with a backpack, how I prepare for century rides, and what it's like to ride all of those miles with a backpack. This video is made possible by a collaboration with Craft Cadence. For solid but affordable waterproof bags designed by commuters for commuters, check out Craft Cadence's website at the top of the description. A couple weeks ago, I attempted to do a 200 mile tour from Sacramento to Oakland and back. Emphasis on the word attempted. This Craft Cadence backpack is the one that I took and it did excellently, so here's why I chose to bring it. A lot of tours and long distance riders look down on backpacks in favor of racks and panniers, and at first glance it seems like the logical no-brainer option, but I tried them and I'm not a fan. When I used panniers, regardless of how much stuff that I actually needed, I ended up filling them because they're so enticing. You take a look at all of that cavernous space that a pannier has, and you take a look at all the stuff that you want to bring on your ride and then you just say why not and throw everything in the kitchen sink in them. Whenever I rode with panniers my bike had much slower and less predictable handling. Overall the experience of riding all of those miles was less enjoyable which almost defeats the purpose of those long distance rides for me. Even when I took off the panniers and just rode with an empty rear rack my bike just handled so sluggishly and the lively handling that I love so much wasn't there. Panniers definitely have their upsides but they're not for me. Packing like for long distance rides makes the ride more enjoyable and simpler. Instead, I prefer to ride with a backpack. It limits what I can take on my ride without being restricting, meaning I can take everything that I need for a multi-day tour, and my bike is unencumbered and still has that lively handling, making every single mile more fun. Part of long distance riding is taking breaks and sightseeing, so you can give your body time to rest so you don't bonk and prematurely end your ride. I like to stop in cities on my way to my destination for a bite to eat. I don't know about you, but I don't trust passengers by to respect my stuff in my panniers while it sits outside on my bike as I'm trying to relax in a cafe or in a restaurant. Whenever I use panniers, I always had to lug them around with me whenever I locked up my bike. And it's a pain because my panniers and most panniers out there don't have shoulder straps. Instead of fumbling with heavier panniers off the bike, I just like to simplify the whole process and throw everything in a backpack. If you want to crush a century ride, preparation is key. The better you prepare, the more likely you'll be to complete your 100 mile ride and enjoy it. There's a couple of ways to prepare your backpack to make your ride more enjoyable. On a completely self-supported tour, sleeping and cooking gear will take up the most space, but you don't have to deal with all that stuff. When I did my tour down Taiwan, I stayed at hotels and ate way too much Mos Burger. Of course, this is going to be more expensive than a completely self-supported tour, but for me, it's more enjoyable. For my tour to the Bay Area, I brought snacks, had some nachos and a burrito on the way, and crashed on my sister's couch. If you don't have family that you like enough to visit, you can go to warmshowers.com so you can get into contact with a fellow cyclist so you can crash on their couch. Or even easier than that, you can make your century ride 50 miles out and then 50 50 miles back home so you can have a well-deserved nap on your own couch. If you want to pack ultra lightweight, all you'll need is a couple of water bottles, some food, and some tools, including a spare inner tube, a pump, and a multi-tool. But I like to have stuff that's a bit more substantial than absolute bare bones, so here's how I pack for my Bay Area tour. I will be bringing everything that I have here along with a set of clothes that is out of frame. And honestly, this is a lot of stuff just for a 200 mile tour. It's camera equipment. If you're not making a video about your ride, you don't have to bring any of this stuff. Laptop, chargers, drone, cameras, all of that nonsense, along with this camera that I'm talking to. And all of this here is mostly the essential stuff, just a lock so you can run into a buffet, along with some food to snack on, some water essential, headphones to not go crazy while you're riding like eight hours a day, and just some basic tools and a notebook. And honestly, this is already way more stuff than I would consider essential, mostly because of the camera equipment. You could easily do a three-day tour or longer on just a backpack. So let's 
pack my backpack. I use the Craft Cadence Waterproof Backpack that I've been using for the past 10 months. If you ever wondered what that sick yellow backpack is in a lot of my videos, it's the Craft Cadence. Simply put, this bag has been everything I've needed and nothing I don't, and it just works. The bag is really simple, but it's versatile, which is the kind of design that I like. Since the main compartment sleeve of the Craft Cadence is removable, I like to undo half of it to make a separate compartment for my clothes. If you keep the sleeve completely attached, it creates two Two compartments on the left and right side of the bag that fit your water bottles perfectly. A good packing practice is to leave extra room for items that you might pick up along the way. The Craft Cane's backpack is fairly big at 30 liters of capacity. Even with everything I packed for a four day tour, including all of my camera equipment, I still had enough room at the top for picking up and storing food along the way. The first step to packing is to compartmentalize everything. It just makes everything much more manageable and staying organized is key, especially when you're wearing it on your back. This looks a lot more manageable than what it was before. There's lots of big things that you just throw in the bag and just try to Tetris around and make fit. Smaller stuff goes into the zipper compartments while big stuff goes into the main compartments. You want to have an even weight distribution so if everything is jumbled up and just loose in your bag, it really hurts. It has a front pocket for things you frequently need. I'm throwing my lock and my tools in there so I don't have to dig through my backpack and mess up my organization every time I need to reach it. And the main compartment has a laptop sleeve which is really nice because laptops are kind of expensive and you want to protect them. And a zipper on the inside to keep hold of loose items that you don't frequently need. I've thrown all of my chargers into one big plastic bag and then all my drone stuff into another big plastic bag just to make it more accessible. I don't need the chargers and that's probably the bane of the packing existence when you have a bunch of loose wires tangling everything up. So at least now the tangling is contained inside of this bag and I won't be needing this while I'm on the tour but once I get to my destination it'll be good to have. Except for my food and drink and my outer layer which will go into my basket and, and bottle cages. This is what 200 miles looks like when it's packed into a backpack. After you've prepared your bag, here's what to expect once you've started pedaling for your century with nothing but the clothes on your back and the burritos in your bag. Comfort is one of the most important factors for distance riding, making it the most common objection for riding with a backpack. In my experience touring with the Craft Cadence, I haven't had any issues with comfort as long as I pack it correctly, putting heavy stuff on the bottom and having an even weight distribution. The thick shoulder strap the sternum strap and the waist strap help to keep that even weight distribution. During and after my century from Sacramento to Oakland with 20 pounds of stuff on my back, shoulder and back pain were not an issue whatsoever. Of course, everybody's different so your mileage may vary, but in general, riding long distances with a backpack is a lot more comfortable than most people would think. The other objection to comfort are the dreaded pools of back sweat. Honestly, as long as you're carrying something on your back, there's no way to 100% eliminate this problem. But the Craft Cadence does have a vented back and shoulder straps, which help your back and shoulders breathe and will at least stop those nasty pools of sweat from forming in mild weather. With a backpack, I feel more confident on my bike since it handles the way I want it to. I'm able to mash up hills, take sharp corners, manhandle my bike on unpaved roads, and descend like a madman. Overall, the more responsive handling characteristics with a backpack make me more comfortable compared to panniers, which make my bike handle handle squirrely. But for crushing 100 mile rides, the physical aspect is only a small component. So I'm just leaving my sister's place in Oakland right now, about to do the 100 miles back. Obviously the conditions are not as hunky-dory today, and I already have 100 miles in my legs. Luckily, I can focus on my riding because this craft cadence backpack I have is waterproof. If you've ever ridden really long distances like this, you know that the ride is about 20% physical and 80% mental. So it's really nice to have this backpack that is fully waterproof so I don't have to worry at all about my electronics getting wet. Which means I can focus on the 80% of the riding that is really important in these long distance rides. So with that, Let's get back home to Sacramento. Right now, I am having the time of my life. I could not be happier. Unfortunately, I don't have much time left to enjoy this beautiful sunny day because I only have 90 more miles until I get home. I feel like a bowl of Cheerios that's been left on the top shelf in the fridge for two hours. My water-resistant jacket has ceased to be water-resistant. 
But I'll tell you what hasn't. This backpack is at least keeping my clothes dry and toasty. So on the bright side, it, when this rain does decide to let up, I can change into a dry, fresh set of clothes. And right now, I'm kind of wishing that my jacket was made out of tarpaulin because boy, I am soggy. I eventually was able to change into a dry set of clothes thanks to the backpack, giving me a huge boost in motivation to complete my second 100 mile ride. But shortly after being refreshed, well, Needless to say, 100 mile rides are no joke, but all the gear you need can fit comfortably into a backpack. As long as you prepare accordingly, you'll enjoy riding your bike and you'll crush those 100 miles. Be sure to pack light, even if it means leaving your extra saddle at home. Thanks to Craft Cadence for supporting this video and making my almost 200 mile ride possible. If you're looking for a solid but affordable waterproof commuting backpack, check out Craft Cadence through the link at the top of the description. With that, life is short but don't make it shorter. Pack your bag to be on your way to crush your first or your next 100 mile ride to be reasonably dangerous.